Welcome to this podcast, Holistic Creators, where we share our unique and universal stories about shaping the future for the four Ps, people, planet, purpose, and profit. My name is Manet Kunze. I'm a mental coach and your host of this show. My intention for this show is to inspire you on your path to a holistic future. So welcome. Welcome to my podcast, Holistic Creators. My name is Wanette and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Christy Sullivan. She is a human design and self-care expert, author, speaker on a mission to help busy women stop overworking and start overflowing. She hosts a virtual community for female personal development junkies like herself and me too, <laughs> to create better wellness, improve relationships, uh, shift mindset and manifest more success, wealth and freedom to live their best life by design. Christy is an international speaker, workshop retreat teacher, and lead author of a new best-selling Amazon book called Stop Overworking and Start Overflowing, 25 Ways to Transform Your Life Using Human Design, launched uh, in October 21 with 25 other human design practitioners. She also is a co-author of three best-selling books written and published on Amazon during the 2020 pandemic, The Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing, The Great Pause, Blessing and Wisdom of COVID-19 and Transforming, Transformation 2020. So welcome to my show, Christy. Thank you, Sona. So happy to be here. So glad that you offered this opportunity to me. Yes, yeah, so, um, I think a lot of people never heard about human design. And this was same for me um, for, for many years. Only about one year ago, I uh, was introduced to this uh, method and it was really like mind blowing for me, understanding all my traps. And I really figured out, okay, if I would have known this before, if I would have known my own design, so many um, yeah, situations I, I was in uh, wouldn't have been necessary because I would understand, okay, I was working against my design. So this is really huge and people, you can be very um, amazed about what Christy can tell you about human design. So welcome to my show and let us know what is this, what is human design? Yes, good place to start. So human design, for the listeners who don't know what it is, is your energetic blueprint based on your birthday. You can find uh, various places on the internet and literally input your birth date, and then you receive something that looks like the shape of a body, uh, a chart that shows different energy centers and aspects of what I say, how you were encoded into this world. And it doesn't change. It's different than a personality assessment, which takes into account your upbringing and your um, environment and ex life experiences. This is literally what uh, you were imprinted with uh, on your birth date. And um, yes, like you said, it can be very helpful for you to understand yourself at a deeper level, um, to start making shifts in your life so that you're not doing things that really don't work for your energy. And we can talk about that more. Um, and, and like you said, it's, um, it can be mind blowing for sure. It's, uh, it's a very complex um, system, but really intriguing. And it's actually, even though it seems fairly new, it does bring together um, ancient wisdoms like astrology, I Ching, Kabbalah, and the chakra system. Yeah, okay, so um, when you say um, that it is like uh, an imprint um, someone comes with uh, because of the birth date and, and place someone is born, so it is really fixed and it is also unique or do people have like uh, being born uh, at the same place and uh, in the same uh, the time or, or around the same time, are they all different or are people having the same uh, chart like yeah, good question. There's actually over 2 billion combinations. So it is unique. It's based on not only your birth date and time and the location, but um, think about that, um, you know, an astrology sign, uh, if you're grouped into a category, um, you still can have very different characteristics or, or um, things that are unique to you. So this is completely your unique blueprint. 
and I, I have done many readings or helped people who understand to understand their chart and I still have not found any two that are alike. Okay, so this is really about me as yeah, like my, my energy being or like my soul or where does it come from? Good question. I think of it like a computer operating system or um, sometimes I talk about like if you if you imagine you're driving a car model and we may be manufactured by the same company. However, when you look at our model or under the hood of the car and you see how the, the engine is built and the circuitry and then you look in the interior and the different colors or designs, then you realize that you're still a unique being and um, it shows the inside of how you are um, naturally operating. Um, for example, like the energy centers each have different aspects. So if you have what's called uh, a defined fixed energy, emotional energy center, then you operate a little differently than someone who has an undefined um, energy center. They're taking in energy or uh, emotions from others versus doing uh, what we call an emotional wave of highs and lows. So it gives you some different aspects and as you look at the many different uh, pieces of information that your design shows it it really is very unique to you and it helps you understand um, how again you were naturally encoded because what happens is when we are born and go through life we tend to receive certain programming instructions and ways of being through our family or school or authority figures um, marketing and so we think that we need to operate a certain way, but we become like a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. And we really start to feel maybe that things don't always work out for us. And why are they not? Is it my self-limiting beliefs or is it I'm not doing things right? And sometimes it's really comes down to it's not really in alignment with our energy operating system. Okay, so um, you said uh, that there are different uh, designs people can be in. Uh, what are these designs? So even though you are a unique being, we usually start with identifying you as one of five energy types. Um, and uh, they are a generator or manifesting generator. And that makes those two categories make up about 70% of the population. And then we have a projector type, which is about 20%. And then the manifester, which is 9%. And then the reflector, which is a very rare 1% of the population. So each of those categories is the first starting point because that's sort of like your astrology sign. It helps you understand some broad things and some ways that you operate. So for example, the generators are here to generate. We actually are very uh, good at being busy and productive and, and getting things done and um, following through with tasks versus a manifester who's here um, to help initiate and create. And we're all taught in a way to be a manifester, to just do it and make things happen. But generators, really, our purpose is best served if we're responding to opportunities and, and tasks that are coming to us or that are uh, present for us. And what happens is when we start to act as a different energy type, then we can often get overwhelmed, frustrated, or burned out. And those are usually some signs that you're perhaps not um, showing that that really natural energy that you're meant to be and doing things in a certain way that better serve you. Okay, so what is with the other signs? Like um, if, if you are, for example, I'm, I'm a projector, I know that <laughs> already. So yes. uh, what are the different ways to behave or what is the strategy uh, like in the different um, types? A good question. And we can start with that because it, it gives some insight for um, if you do know your design and find out what it is, this one, these one simple things that you can implement. So, for example, I said a generator, which I am. Um, we like to um, be busy and doing things, but we also need to be doing the right kind of work and responding to um, the work that is around us. For projectors, your type, 
which again are 20% of the population. You're here, your role is to share insight and wisdom and to do that in the correct way or the best way. Um, you, you do it in a way that, to be recognized and invited to share that information. When that happens, then people will hear you and generators will respond and manifestors will, will um, take that insight and create and initiate. So we all can then kind of coexist together in a very beautiful ecosystem. So projectors like you are here to, again, share their wisdom and insight. They don't have the same type of battery, so to speak, to operate like a generator. And if they start to do that, they will burn out. They will actually maybe even feel um, health issues. And a projector needs downtime. They need plenty of time to recharge or to rest. And so um, let's say a one difference is the generator would do really well, perhaps in a nine to five job. They're able to have this energy to keep going. But the projector doesn't have that same energy center or battery, so they just need time throughout the day to make sure that they're getting um, uh, recharged and, and not depleted. Yeah, I can totally understand that. So um, I, I worked, uh, of course, as a, a freelancer and I had my own company, but I worked really like a generator. And I was very close to a burnout. And uh, when I figured this out, uh, it meant for me, okay, I really have to change my life and to understand how this design works for me and how I can, of course, I work still a lot, but it is not like the same way as I have done this before. And really this made a huge shift in not only going from Germany to Madeira, but also like the way I'm now living here, having my courses and, and really try to live more as my de design um, is asking it, yeah. Yeah, and another way to look at it is, for example, that 70% of generators and manifesting generators, which are, are two types, they have this um, very strong battery um, to get things done and, and they can do things really well. And, and when we're we're really doing the right kind of work. It doesn't even feel like work. It just feels like we're just doing things that feel good. The projector, for example, they can still work well and successfully, but they need to do it in shorter spurts. They also need more focus on one thing rather than, um, uh, again, initiating like a, a manifester or uh, moving from one thing to another. Um, really, the projector is best when they are in uh, something for a, maybe a longer period of time and doing short bursts of work. The manifester also doesn't have a very uh, defined um, sacral energy, which is that car battery. So they need to also take some downtime and rest and recharge, create creative time especially. Um, so each type, just knowing that alone can give you a lot of insight into how you're working or um, operating through the day. And then other aspects even look at how are you processing emotions? How are you, um, how are you able to make decisions better? And how do you communicate in the best way? So when you look at different aspects of your design at more closely and what's unique to you, then that also creates um, even more information and a picture of, of your blueprint. Mm -hmm. You have spoken now uh, several times about different center and if they are defined or not defined. Can you go a little bit deeper into that? Yes. So we call this going down the rabbit hole as we go a little bit deeper. Um, so each energy center, and there are nine of them in the system, are responsible for different, again, the characteristics of, of energy or even um, related to different aspects within the body, within the mental, mental, emotional, and physical body. So, for example, I mentioned the emotional center. Um, this is um, an important center because it's, it's where we process emotions. And we have, for example, um, two kinds. One that is what's called an open center where we don't have a consistent um, uh, emotional uh, pattern, so to speak, we're actually very influenced, or those with an open center are influenced by the emotions around them, what they're receiving from their, either their environment or people around them. 
And then if you're the opposite of that and have what's called a defined center, it's a more consistent pattern that you have of emotions, of highs and lows. It's like a, an emotional wave, so to speak. And, and that's what you have in your chart, uh, Swana. I'm going to give some examples using your chart. Um, you have what's called a defined emotional center. So it means that you naturally have some highs and lows. Now, when it comes to making decisions, this is an important center for you. Rather than being spontaneous, and what's important is our mind will want to take over and make decisions. It's how we're programmed through life. However, it's the body that holds an even greater wisdom for helping us make decisions. For you, that's the emotional center. And rather than being spontaneous, because if you're in an emotional high and you say, yes, you may regret it later that you said that, let's ride that wave for about 24 hours so you'll find what's called emotional clarity. And then that will give you an even more clear, again, um, decision for what you need to do, whether to, to do that or not to do that, and uh, whatever that decision is. Does that make sense for you? Absolutely. So um, for me, it is really like feeling into that. Yeah, it is not like uh, normally we have this pros and cons. No, if I decide like this, what would be the outcome and like that, what would be the outcome? But for me, it's important really to, yeah, I would say to sleep the night over and uh, yeah, to, to have different moods and then uh, feel into that and after that making the decision. So for important uh, questions, I always uh, now do that. <laughs> yes, and about 50% of the population have this defined emotional center. So you're right, sleeping on it for 24 hours is a good idea. Um, and I will give advice to say to somebody, if they ask, um, you know, for a decision to, to ask for 24 hours to get back to them or to say, I think so, but let me confirm with you tomorrow or in a few hours, whatever that time period that you choose. And, um, and then trusting there's an emotional body response that actually confirms. Because you're right, when we go into the head, we can weigh the pros and cons. And what happens is we actually can create a lot of confusion and chaos from the head. We can overthink things and overanalyze things. And the head, the purpose of the head in the human design system is really holding information, holding memories, receiving insights, um, doing research but the decision making is in the body. So that's an important aspect. And depending on your design, there are other um, ways too of in, in a blueprint for decision making. Um, it's not all for um, the emotional center. That's only about 50% of the population. So what are the other center uh, that are important for making decision, for example? And there's a variety of ways. So when you run your chart and look at your design, it can it can pinpoint what that is, but it may be like for me using what's called my sacral energy center to ask yes, no questions and feel what that response is. Um, for others, it's leaning into intuition and the intuitive voice that will kind of guide you. Um, and then and there's also a, a rare, rare aspect of some that are called um, mental projectors and mental decision makers where Although it's not the head, it's really about um, voicing out, voicing the um, decision or thoughts about it, and then feeling into that. So, um, but that's that's um, not very common. So, again, when you're looking at your design, it can give you some insight. And then um, I would always suggest talking to somebody who's a human design practitioner to help them uh, explain to you your design. Mm -hmm. Can you give us uh, an overview about the seventh center? Like uh, we already heard, like there are the different ones, like the sacral and the emotional one, but what are yes. the seven centers? And um, if they are um, defined, what is special about people who have them de de defined? And if they are open, what does it mean? Um, yeah. The opposite, yeah. Um, I will give you a quick overview. Typically, when I uh, work with someone to dis dis describe and, and um, discuss their blueprint, we actually take about two sessions, about an hour, an hour and a half each. So um, we don't have that time, but I will go through a little bit so it gives you some aspects. Now, in the chakra system, 
we hear about seven chakras in the body, and in this case, two of them split, so we really are looking at nine centers. And we start usually with the head. Um, when you have an open head, um, you receive a lot of information or ideas. Um, when it's defined, you're processing and um, fixed on certain ideas and things that are coming from you rather than from around you. Also, the Ajna, which is closely tied, um, that's the third eye, again, where we receive insights and beliefs and um, where we usually try to make decisions. Um, so open openness there means that you may be indecisive. Again, rely on the body for the decision. Um, and fixed means you may have certain ways of of doing things and of thinking. And then we look at the throat, which is responsible for communication. When it's defined, you're very um, focused on how you speak and what you say, the words you say. When it's open, um, you sometimes can feel not heard and actually better to have an invitation to speak, like an invitation to be on a podcast, because I have an open throat. Um, then we move down into um, one of two heart centers. There's an identity center and a will center, the identity responsible for your sense of self. And in this center, um, if you're open, you actually feel maybe like a chameleon, like you are uh, able to kind of reflect when you're back around certain people, uh, a sense of identity that they have um, versus your own specific identity. Um, so that's uh, very interesting because who you surround yourself is very important when, an op when you have an open identity center. The will center, which I'll, I'll pause on, only one out of eight people have a defined will center. And in this center, that willpower is where what's generated for only one out of eight people. So that means most of us are open and don't have consistent willpower, while a defined um, will center will have that consistency, that routine, that um, endurance uh, coming from, from that center. And then we move to the emotional center, which we already talked about. Uh, next, we'll talk about the, the sacral center. Um, some of us think of that as like the second chakra. Um, this is, again, very much uh, related. If you're defined, you are a generator or manifesting generator. And if you're not, it means you just need more downtime and to recognize that you don't have consistent workforce or life force energy like a defined does. And then the last two, the spleen. The spleen is um, also related a bit to the emotions. It's about intuition and perhaps even sense of fear. And if you're defined, you have a very specific way to be intuitive and undefined many, many ways, but you um, aren't consistent and it comes and goes. Uh, and then the final one, the root, the root center, which is sort of at the very uh, grounding place for us, is all about adrenaline. And it's about how we actually work to get things done. Um, it, it works in tangent with um, perhaps the sacral or the emotional center. That's, that root center is, again, if you're cons defined, you have consistent access to this adrenaline, spurt of adrenaline to get things done. And when you're open, you feel pressure to get things done. And it's never really um, consistently there. So that was all, all nine. <laughs> and as you, as you probably know, there's a lot of information. So again, I always recommend talking with somebody um, or taking uh, little bits and learning a little at a time if you're doing your own self-study. Yeah. Um, but I think it is important to, uh, for all the, our audience that never have heard about it, just to give an overview, like the first uh, uh, two uh, steps down in the design to understand about what type and, and, and what are the different uh, centers to get an idea. And of course, um, it also makes sense to speak with you and uh, yeah, to, to get the own design and, and understand more about that. Um, coming back to a point that you already mentioned, what happens um, if people don't live um, as their design would uh, show them how to live to? Yes, that's it's a great um, question. Um, in human design, when you understand that you have this blueprint, 
it's also important to note that you go through life experiences and even uh, messaging from, for example, pa uh, parents or family or the ancestral sort of culture that you have. And that is what we call conditioning. So those are ways of being that we're programmed in. Uh, we can get that when we go to school or, again, listening to perhaps the media or other marketing messages. And we get that programming that we should do this or this has been the way we've always done things. Um, a great one uh, I, I talk about in readings is like the idea that children should be um, seen and not heard. You know, different principles that we live by, but it's because it's been passed down. And when we understand our human design, some of those principles and programming um, suppress, so to speak, how we naturally are. For example, if you're a child uh, with a defined throat, you might talk a lot. And parents, again, will often maybe say to the child, like, you need to be quiet, only speak when, when you're asked. And it's hard for that defined throat to do that. So how can we support perhaps that child and giving them opportunities to speak um, and express um, from that throat? And, and that's just one example. So when you are not living in the design that you have, um, life can start to seem hard or it might feel not good or it will feel out of alignment, so to speak. It can also lead sometimes to some health issues. For example, if a projector's overworking and they're not sleeping well, you know, that's a sign that you're not, um, you're not in your alignment. So just being aware that when you're not living in your design, it will then affect you as well as your situation around. And we often um, nowadays are starting to look more at um, ourselves and how we show up and what can we do for ourselves, our inner work, our self-care. And that's really important because it is starting from the inside. Who we are is so important to how we are in this world. Yeah, so um, looking at my design, of course, I already understood that, um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm not like the generator working, working, working. So for me to stay healthy, it means like working in, in shorter time uh, amounts and then having a pause and then working again, like something like that. Um, yeah, exactly. So you learned um, to shift in a way that you were operating. So rather than... Um, trying to uh, tell yourself, I need to work hard, I need to work hard, which is a, a programming that we all often have. I have that for my um, family upbringing. And even as a generator, if we're working so hard or um, being too busy, then we are not in tune with not only our energy, but we're missing opportunities or missing um, the right um, invitations, like a projector needs uh, to really take care of themselves so that they can be recognized for who they are, just even by that energy and large aura that you have. And when you're recognized and then invited to share your wisdom and you feel good, then um, there's more alignment and you actually will um, help many people, I think, with your, your wisdom and insight. And, and that can only happen when you're really feeling like you're in your alignment. Yeah, so otherwise, <clears throat> being not invited, but speaking out my truth means for me, like in my own personal life, being rejected, like not only not being heard, but it, it really feels like being rejected and that people uh, are not listening and it's... Um, I, I become uh, frustrated or bitter because now I have so much to share, but hey, why, why are you not listening to that? <laughs> so Yes, yes, and that's so important because um, projectors, also manifestors who are not in that same strong energy that we have of um, the generator types, when they can often feel misunderstood we use the word rejected, there's also um, can be feelings of bitterness or even anger that, uh, or irritability because 
it just doesn't feel like uh, you have the right support or that you're fitting in. And again, we're not here to fit in and be like others, but to really honor our sense of uniqueness. And that's something that human design helps is to validate who you are at a deeper level. And then you also learn to honor others for their uniqueness because they have different energies. How can I understand uh, if someone else is also a projector or a generator? Because uh, as I think, I have to kind of behave a little bit differently. Like if I have another projector, I really would speak out. I invite you to, you know, for example, show a, yeah. a show as a guest. And if, if someone is a generator, it's perhaps I only have to show them, oh, see, I, I have a, a podcast. Um, do you think this is, is something interesting? And they will say, oh, yeah, this sounds good. And perhaps they will come to me and say, perhaps no, I can be a good guest for your show. So how do I know or how, how can I figure out with whom I'm speaking? Well, again, it may not be easy to do that right away because if people are living with conditioning, then they're not always um, uh, able to really show that true design that they are. So what I would suggest is like a projector, inviting others is also helpful to you. Recognizing yourself before others recognize you is also important. Um, and offering opportunities, offering invitations, that um, is great for others who are either generators or projectors. Manifestors also are here to um, again, initiate, and for them, it's important that they inform those around them. So, for example, if you are a manifester, informing others is great, and if you are not sure if someone's a manifester, informing them um, with information, like the invitation to be on the podcast, and then informing how the podcast is going to work and what needs to happen, that can also be helpful for the manifester type. Um, so, in general, I think it's First, start with honoring your design and using some of those components when you communicate with others. That can be helpful. And then um, you can always um, look up others' uh, charts if you do know their birthday. Like, for example, if you have a business partner, it can be great to um, look online and see what their design is. Or if you have family members, that helps. Um, and, you know, that, that's a good starting point. It, it, again, always talking to somebody can also add further insight. Okay. And if, if people um, want to understand it a little bit more, you, you have written a book. So can you, uh, on the one hand, show us the book? So do you have it? Uh, by yes. Side? Okay. So this is how the book looks like. And can you give us a little bit more information about uh, this book? What is this all about? Sure. Well, it's again called Stop Overworking and Start Overflowing. And I brought together 25 human design practitioners who are like me, who have um, some of this training and um, knowledge and are helping others understand their human design. So we all came together and it's not a technical book. It's actually a book of stories that each of us wrote a chapter about how we discovered human design and what shifted for us. And then we also each offer a tool or technique to help with energy alignment, with um, understanding yourself deeper. And so there's some practical tips that are also included. So uh, the book came out. It's on Amazon or also on my website. And I always recommend that, um, you know, reading all these various stories, there's projectors, there's one reflector, there's manifestors and generators in this book, that um, their information is also included. And you can look at those um, human design practitioners information and, and services that they offer. There's, there's people out there to help you, guide you. Um, There's also resources I've seen on social media, like, for example, pages and groups that are for projectors, so you can receive support and being in your design. Um, and the book is, again, just another resource, um, and uh, you don't have to read it cover to cover. You can just open any chapter and get some inspiration. Okay, you said in this book, uh, people can find your story, how you came to uh, this human design um, method. 
So can you give us a little bit of information about that? Have you ever worked, uh, since when are you working with that? And uh, how did you come to this uh, amazing tool? Yes, I discovered it about five or six years ago. A friend of mine um, put out an email and a video that caught my attention. The title was Three Myths and One Life-Changing Truth. And um, I started working with her in a coaching program because she was offering this human design as a foundation for how to start living in your unique, authentic self. Um, so I worked with her, understood the human design system. Once I learned it, I started to even uh, do readings for my family. And, and just um, rewinding a bit, I had been working in a career for many years and um, had an interest in, in wellness uh, on the side. I was in marketing, doing wellness on the side, and I had started doing a side business in network marketing, which uh, I wanted to be very successful in. So I tried to follow the formula that was part of um, this system. Uh, a lot of it was initiating, and as a generator, that didn't really work for me. And I felt like I was putting so much time and effort, and maybe it wasn't the right kind of work as well. When I um, then had an opportunity in 2020, um, to step back from my career and do something fully on my own. Um, I was, again, I had known about human design and talked about it, and somebody invited me or gave me the opportunity to speak about human design to a group. And when I did, others were then interested in, in, in a reading. So again, I had these opportunities as a generator, which was so great to then... Um, uh, follow through on and to do some readings. I had then a book opportunity that came around in that year, actually three of them by the year end. And so I was just responding and suddenly had this um, now business doing what I'm doing. So I went from um, finding out about it as sort of a hobby and then now doing it as a career. Yeah, and you said that not only that, of course, your, your business changed, but um, were there other changes like um, that you felt more fulfilled or more healthy or anything else? Yes, um, I'd say, you know, one of the biggest is that I don't really feel like I'm doing work um, because the, it's the right kind of thing right now for where I am. I feel that um, doing podcasts and teaching um, and uh, doing readings feels just very natural for me. So I can uh, do that all day, so to speak. But I'm also very aware of doing my self-care. And that's important no matter what energy type you are. Because it's not all about work, um, hard work, work behind the computer, business work, um, or even fully taking care of others. You need to be taking care of yourself so that your energy stays healthy and in alignment. So also I write about in the book on how self-care is an important tool for a couple of reasons. One, if you're doing inner work, it helps you release some of that conditioning and programming that's blocking perhaps your design. And when you're doing things that feel good, so whatever self-care that is for you, perhaps it's movement, a walk outside in nature, maybe it's journaling, meditating, whatever self-care is that feels good to you, helps that energy within you also align. Okay, so I come to a question that is, okay, you now take you know, yourself more in the center, and um, what happens to your environment when you start really behaving differently? So I can imagine that people uh, come up with, oh, you're now so selfish, or uh, you're so in your ego now behaving like whatever differently. <laughs> so um, how do we react then on our environment? Because there will be a transformation in, in us, in our behavior, in our appearance, if we uh, live um, uh, as our, uh, like our design is, is asking us for. So yeah, what yeah. Do you think about that? So what I truly think is we are all energy. 
And we attract like a magnet. We attract the things that we either need or we don't attract what we don't need. So for example, if we're really, um, you're right, the, the environment does change. If we're being who we authentically are, then perhaps um, if we're hearing judgment, there's still part of us that is judging ourselves. In human design, we start to understand that, for example, in, in the will center, um, we know there is a part of the undefined will um, centers that may feel undervalued. Or there's another part of the energy um, in the throat center that might feel vulnerable to criticism. And when we become aware of that and start to step into a different choice or a different way of perceiving that, like recognizing our, our defined throat may feel vulnerable to criticism, but at the same time, it's meant here to speak words of wisdom and, and, and guidance for others. So if we start to become more of who we are, then our environments will certainly change to support more of who we are. So I would say in my life, I've noticed less criticism, less of the challenging energy because I'm accepting myself more and being who I truly um, feel I'm meant to be according to my design. Um, it's not to say that things can't be challenging, but now I have a different perception and a different way of choosing how I deal with that. Um, again, it starts, I think, from the inside. If I'm accepting who I am, if I know I'm working on my self-limiting beliefs or conditioning, then that does affect my environment, but I would say in more of a positive way. And, um, and that, that truly is, I think, what we're all meant to be, is to, to be more in that compassion and love and um, connection to help others also be who they truly are. Yeah, so what I definitely see is that the environment will react. And this means, uh, from my point of view, that uh, in my life, people left because they said, yeah, you are now so different. Uh, I can't handle this anymore. I don't want to be with you anymore. And other people showed up that uh, now are more um, in alignment with, uh, with who I am and how I live. And so, yeah, this also can mean that uh, perhaps people will um, leave and other new people will come in and like you know, the, the job, perhaps you have to leave the job and, and find another one that is more in alignment uh, with yeah. what you really uh, need to do. Yeah. And that was really part of my journey. That's a great example because as I started to shift, um, my job did shift, uh, a job I had for about 20 years suddenly was not there and I was able to move in a different direction. And um, that doesn't always happen easily, but it's as if something happened and I just, the timing was, was I was ready for that. The timing was there and um, we just need to stay connected to ourselves and to not have even judgment or um, feel that the, the things that are happening are negative because they really can end up with something positive. For example, um, you know, people who may leave your life, it's, it's not, um, again, if we go into the head and start to think of judgment, but if we release that and realize, well, um, they were here for a certain period of time and added to my life, and now they're moving on, I'm moving on, and then another person will come into your life who then um, is there for you in this stage. So it's definitely always it's part of our evolution, part of our transformation, and to trust that we're, we're meant to just be on a path, uh, and we're on the right path. Yeah, so I, I absolutely can um, tell you that I got the same feeling, like I was in this huge transformation uh, and uh, uh, reading your description, like being uh, a junkie, <laughs> like wanting to develop and, and, and grow uh, more and more. Uh, I really feel that um, the human design was a huge step in my own uh, evolution and evolving and understanding more about uh, not only my own design, but also how I can interact 
with other people and why I get some reactions from other people and not taking this personally, but seeing, okay, at what time, for example, I behaved again against my design and then, okay, I understand, yeah, this was just a mirror showing up again, like, yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. So it, it is really about the process, understanding how we can grow uh, using this kind of, of human design. Yes, and a good point that we're spiritual or self-growth junkies, personal development junkies, and I feel that human design is a tool that crosses your path once you've been doing some of that that work. Um, I used to love like personality assessments. I had been doing um, some insight and reflection for many years using healing modalities and things like tapping and ancestral clearing and family constellation. So I was, I was already sort of looking at different aspects of who I was and then human design popped up. So I call it kind of graduate level. When you are ready, it will show up. <laughs> yeah, so it did. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I think a lot of people are now interested in understanding where they can reach out to you and you know, perhaps get their own reading. Um, are there uh, any opportunities to yeah, come in contact with you? Yes, I do have a website where you can find my book, uh, download a, a free PDF, joining my newsletter list, and also um, reach out to me. And it's www.christy, K-R-I-S-T-I, H Sullivan, S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N dot com, Christy H Sullivan dot com. I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook group called Christy's Self-Care and Human Design Community. And um, I'm also on Instagram as Christy H Sullivan. So you can reach out to me. Um, I'm sure we could put the, um, the links in your podcast and um, reach out to me if you'd like some support for your human design journey. And um, I'm so grateful that we had a chance to talk about this. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. I will put uh, all the links in the description below so people can easily reach out to you. And uh, thank you so much for being my guest today and speaking about human design. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening or watching my podcast, Holistic Creators. If you want to know more about how I can help and support you, have a look at my website, spiritualchangemaker.com. You can also join my Facebook group, Spiritual Changemakers Community. Stay tuned for the next episode by subscribing to this channel. And you also can check the previous 